Merry Christmas, everybody! We have all seen by now Chatty as Spike 2's little uh, video where he claims to uh, disprove the existence of Santa Claus. Come on, I've had enough of you and your A Santa Clausism. The fact is that I happen to have five proofs for the existence of Santa Claus. Now, you have to debunk all five of these evidences, and then, after you do all that, you still have to show absolute evidence that A Santa Clausism is accurate and correct. Now the first proof of the existence of Santa Claus is that the universe is fine-tuned to support the existence of Santa Claus. I'm talking about the weak and strong nuclear force, the magnetic force, and of course the gravitational force. All of this produces an environment in which we live, a uh, water-covered terrestrial planet with a viable atmosphere within the habitable swim around the sun. All of this is done to support Santa Claus. Uh, if one of these factors were, were off by a factor of one out of an um, um, uh, astronomically big number, then Santa Claus could not possibly exist. But because we live on a water-covered terrestrial planet with the viable atmosphere within a habitable zone around a star, that means Santa Claus has to exist. Now, the second proof of the existence of Santa Claus is the North Pole. That's right. You cannot have a North Pole without a Santa Claus, just as much as you cannot have a Santa Claus without a North Pole. The only other argument against this is you have to say that the North Pole somehow created itself out of nothing and then created Santa Claus. You cannot say that. Our planet has a North Pole, therefore Santa Claus exists. Now the third proof for the existence of Santa Claus is the objective morality. You see, he knows when we've been sleeping, he knows when we're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. This, with the existence of Santa Claus, gives us an objective standard of morality. Without the existence of Santa Claus, we would not have the standard of morality. We would not know whether or not to put candy or coal into children's stocks unless Santa Claus exists. Now, the fourth proof for the existence of Santa Claus is the testimony of the people who have seen Santa Claus, who have talked with Santa Claus, who left out milk and cookies for Santa Claus. Now, think about it, if Santa Claus didn't exist, then every parent on the face of the planet that were tell children that they have to be asleep by midnight or Santa Claus would not come, are all collectively lying to their children, it would have to require a vast worldwide conspiracy that all these parents are lying to the children, and there's no reason why parents would lie like that. No, it has to be because it is all true. That's right, the witness that our parents give to us about Santa Claus proves the existence of Santa Claus. Now my fifth proof of the existence of Santa Claus is this gift. That's right, this gift did not exist prior to midnight last night. This gift could have only come from Santa Claus. That's not right. As a matter of fact, I even have this note that is left. Look, it says, to Odyssey Man, from Santa. See? They're rare. They're bold letters. If Santa Claus did not exist, I would not have this gift. This amounts to historical proof of the existence of Santa Claus. That's right, Chatty S. Spike 2. I just proved the existence of Santa Claus. Now, Chatty S. Spike 2, not only do you have to disprove all five of those claims, including this historical evidence, but you also have to provide proof and evidence of the non-existence of Santa Claus. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to open this up and I'm going to see what Santa Claus left me. It's a book. I'm a history major. I love books. Let's see what book it is. Oh, man. It's the Bible. Kringle? I'm tired of reading fiction.